open your mouth and give him praise. Father, we thank you. Oh, come on, open your mouth and thank him. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. There is none like you. Thank you for your word. Let's thank him for last month's covenants. Let's thank him for the previous prophetic encounters, for all he did for us. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, we thank you. Thank him, thank him. For grateful people shall never prosper. Father, we thank you. We exalt you, we exalt you. Thank him, thank him. Receive all the glory. Thank him for all he's done for you. For all he's done for your family. For all he's done for your children. Lord, we worship you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst. Do a new thing. Take us to the next level. Open our eyes into your truth, the truth of your word, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you're welcome to uh, the September prophetic encounter. Uh, We thank God for how far he's brought us and we thank God for what he's doing in our midst. To him alone be all the glory. In the name of Jesus, Uh, we want to welcome you all wherever you are uh, to what God is about to do. We are expectant that God will visit you in an unusual way in Jesus' name. Please be expectant. Uh, Be expectant because God is going to touch you at the point of your need in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? All right, turn with me please in your Bibles to the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 13 to 16. Romans chapter 9 from verse 13 to 16. I read, it says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. For he says, I will have mercy upon whomsoever I will have mercy, and I will have compassion upon whomsoever I will have compassion. So then, It is not of him that wills, nor of him that runs, but it's of God who shows mercy. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. Uh, I'm starting a new series that I have titled, Unveiling the Mystery of Unprecedented Favor. Unveiling the Mystery of of unprecedented favor, and this is part one. Please understand that a life without favor is a life of struggle. A life without favor is a life of struggle. If you go through life without engaging the favor of God, then you go through struggles. So a life without favor is a life full of struggles. And God in his wisdom has destined that we encounter his favor. God has destined that we encounter his favor. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 9 verse 13, it says, As it is written, 
Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. I want you to understand that at this point, they were both not yet born. Yet God says, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. They were both not born. Yet God says, Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. You can see right here the manifestation of unprecedented favor. You see, a life without favor is a life of struggle. A life without favor is a life full of struggle. So God said, Esau I have hated. Now, isn't it interesting that when you look at the end of Esau, you will then understand why God hated him even when he was not born. His actions depicted one that was hated. He did all the wrong things for all the wrong reasons. So in verse 14, the Bible says, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Then the Bible answered, certainly not. That means there is no unrighteousness in God. God is a righteous God. God in his wisdom operates according to his sovereignty. That's why he says in verse 15, he said, For he says to Moses, God is saying to Moses, I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy. That is God's sovereignty right there. And he says, I'll have compassion on whomever I'll have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, or of him that runneth, but it's of God who showeth mercy. That is favor. So when God shows you favor, his favor separates you from among the crowd. The favor of God will always separate you from among the crowd. Quick question we want to ask before we proceed further is what is unprecedented favor? What is unprecedented favor? There are two words there, so let's look at them one at a time. The first word is unprecedented. The word unprecedented simply means Never done or known before. The word unprecedented means never done or known before. And we are, as, as, a, as a world, living in an unprecedented time. We have never seen what we are seeing in today's world, whereby through COVID-19, Whole nations were grounded. We have never seen what we are seeing. So that means we are living in unprecedented times. Are you following me? The second word we want to look at is favor. The second word is favor. What is favor? Favor is over generous preferential treatment. Favor can be defined as over generous preferential treatment. So if we combine those two words together, unprecedented favor, it can be defined as never done or known over generous preferential treatment from God and man. So unprecedented favor can be defined as never done or never known or over generous preferential treatment from God and man. And I prophesy over somebody, you are about to enter that season. Amen. You are about to enter into a season where the unprecedented favor of God is about to break loose in your life. It will be a time of never done, never known, over generous preferential treatment from God and from man. Because listen, when you are living in unprecedented times, you need unprecedented favor. Amen. Say amen to that. Amen. 
No one can gain access to the favor of God unless they are connected to God. No one or no man can gain access to the favor of God unless they are connected to God. So question we want to ask, or before we go to that question, is that abiding in Jesus is the secret to remaining connected and enjoying a lifetime of unprecedented favor. Abiding in Jesus is the secret to remaining connected and enjoying a lifetime of unprecedented favor. John chapter 15 from verse 4 to 7. John chapter 15 from verse 7 from verse 4 to 7. Jesus said, "Abide in me and I in you." Abide in me. So that means if you want to get favor from God, you have to abide in him. John chapter 15 verse 4. Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and I in you. You can access the favor of God if you are outside of Christ Jesus. So Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So that means without Christ Jesus, you cannot bear fruit. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Do you see that? So that means if you want to connect with divine favor or supernatural favor, you have to be resident in Christ Jesus. You have to be resident in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Say amen to that. For without me, you can do nothing. So that means without Jesus, you can do nothing. That's why Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. A branch can never survive by its own. For a branch to bear fruit, that branch has to be connected to the vine. So Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you can do nothing. You can access unprecedented favor without abiding in Christ Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying? Jesus said, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. So look at what happens when you are not in Christ Jesus. When you are not in Christ Jesus, you wither. The end result of not abiding in Christ Jesus is withering. Jesus said, if anyone does not abide in me, if anyone does not abide in me, most of the times many people are believing God for unprecedented favor and they think that they can get favor outside of God. You can attain the favor of God outside of God. So Jesus said, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. 
He is cast out as a branch and he is with us. So that means the only time you're going to remain fruitful, the only time you are going to enjoy a life of favor is to abide in Christ Jesus. When you don't abide in Christ Jesus, you are cut off and you will be with him. And, the, and, Jesus, and when you are with it, you are thrown into the fire and they are burned. That's the end of those who don't abide in Christ Jesus. Jesus went forth further to say, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Glory be to God. And I believe that by the time we get to the end of today's session, by the time we get to tomorrow, by the time we get to Friday, God will supernaturally transform somebody's situation. Amen. God will supernaturally transform somebody's desire. Amen. Somebody will encounter the favor of God in an unusual way in the name of Jesus. Write this down. Even Jesus Christ needed favor to be able to fulfill his earthly ministry successfully. Even Jesus needed favor to be able to successfully fulfill his earthly ministry. So if Jesus needed favor, how much more you? How much more you? How much more you? Luke chapter 2 verse 20, 52. Luke chapter 2 verse 52. The Bible says that and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and favor with men. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and in favor with men. So four levels of increase. Four levels of increase. Number one, Jesus increased in wisdom. Jesus increased in wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the relevant and practical application of the word of God. So Jesus increased in wisdom. And the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. My prayer for you today is that God will give you wisdom. Amen. James chapter 1 verse 5. The Bible says that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask. And when you ask for wisdom, the Bible says that God gives liberally. God gives to all liberally without reproach. And it will be given to him. If you want wisdom, ask God for wisdom. And please hear me. Wisdom and favor walk hand in hand. Wisdom and favor Walk hand in hand. A life of wisdom without favor is a life of struggle. Have you not heard that there was a poor wise man in a city who delivered the city, yet no one knew of him? That is wisdom without favor. You need wisdom and favor to go hand in hand. That's why the Bible says that Jesus increased in number one, wisdom. Number two, Jesus increased in stature. Jesus increased in stature. What does it mean to increase in stature? To, in, to increase in stature is to, is to manifest the glory of God. Is to manifest the wisdom of God. To in, increase in stature is a visible manifestation of the goodness of God in your life. I pray for someone today that you will increase not only in wisdom, but you will increase in stature. Amen. Say a good amen. amen. You will increase not only in wisdom, but you will also increase in stature. Amen. 
The third thing Jesus increased in is Jesus increased in favor with God. Jesus increased in favor with God. Oh, I love that. So you see, number one, Jesus increased in wisdom. Number two, Jesus increased in stature. Number three, Jesus increased in wisdom, in favor with God. Now I want you to notice how the Bible puts all of these things. Because these things are not coincidence. The scriptures are careful. The scriptures are careful. They are intentionally put together. There are no accidents in the Bible. There are no errors in the Bible. Are you following me? So the Bible says that Jesus increased in favor with God. Most of times people are looking at the other way around. They want to increase in favor with men. But listen, the first point of your increase in favor must be with God. Once you are increased in favor with God, increase in favor with men becomes automatic. So number four, Jesus increased in favor with men. Number one, Jesus increased in wisdom. Number two, Jesus increased in stature. Number three, Jesus increased in favor with God. And number four, Jesus increased in favor with men. When God increases you in his favor, no man can reject you. And I prophesy over you today, solution, that no man shall reject you. In the name of Jesus from today, everything your heart desire, any, any application you make, any promotion you desire, any house you are believing God for, anything you are believing God for this year, God will give it to you. Amen. I said God will give it to you because you have increased in favor with God and you have increased in favor with man. Right, this down. Without the favor of God, life becomes full of constant struggles. Without the favor of God, life becomes full of constant struggles. Psalm 44 verse 3. Psalm 44 verse 3, the Bible says, For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did, they own arms, nor did their own arms save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance, because you favored them. Glory be to God. So what can the favor of God do? Number one, the favor of God is able to give us possession of land. Amen. Write that down. The favor of God is able to give us possessions of land. Amen. Number two, the favor of God is able to give us victory. Amen. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword. Nor did they... Nor, nor did they, their own arms, save them. So the favor of God engenders victory. When you are operating under the unprecedented favor of God, you can never lose any battle. I don't know what battles that confront you, but from today, I declare you victorious. Amen. You are declared victorious. Amen. You are declared victorious Amen. in the name of Jesus. Number three things that the favor of God does is the favor of God causes you to shine. Yes. The favor of God causes you to shine. The Bible says that, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance. The light of your countenance. When the favor of God is upon you, you shine. Amen. You're bright. Amen. The glory of God is seen upon you. Amen. I prophesy over this commission that we have entered into a new season Amen. of unprecedented favor. Amen. 
a new season of unprecedented glory. We'll begin to hear testimonies we have not heard before. We'll begin to see things we have not seen before. We'll begin to see miracles we have not seen before. We'll begin to see the dead raised back to life. We'll begin to see harvests of testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. The favor of God causes you to shine. So therefore I declare to you, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you in the name of Jesus. Right? Is and God blesses the righteous with his favor. God blesses the righteous with his favor. Psalm 5 verse 12. Psalm 5 verse 12. The Bible says that for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor you will surround him as with a shield. I declare unto you today, solution, that from today, the shield of the Lord will become your favor. The favor of God will shield you. It will shield you on all angles. And from henceforth, wherever you go, you will be accepted. You will be accepted. You will be promoted. You will get that land. You will get that house. You will get that contract. You will get that promotion. In the name of Jesus. Because God blesses the righteous with his favor. Question we want to ask is how do we attain unprecedented favor from God? How do we attain unprecedented favor from God? Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 14. It says, Not that I have attained, not that I have already attained, nor I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Therefore, I press on towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It says, I press forward. I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So how do I attain unprecedented favor? How do I attain unprecedented favor. Number one, develop an attitude of not yet attain. Number one, develop an attitude of not yet attain. You see, unfortunately, many people think that they have arrived. But you see, to attain unprecedented favor from God, you have to develop an attitude of not yet attained. Paul said, I, I know that I have already attained. Considering all the things he has achieved, he still saw himself as someone who has not attained anything. Are you following what I'm saying? So have developed an attitude of not yet attained. Develop that attitude. Don't ever get to any, any stage in life and think that you have arrived. Amen? Amen? Don't ever get to any stage in life, no matter how God lifts you up and think that you have arrived. 
always develop an attitude of not yet attained. Number two, do not let your imperfections stop you from pressing on. Number two, do not let your imperfections stop you from pressing on. Now, you know, Paul, Paul was a killer. He used to kill the, 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 the brethren. He used to kill Christians. But in all his imperfections, he didn't stop pressing on. Keep pressing. You're believing God for unprecedented favor. You fell, you fell along the way. Don't give up. Don't allow your imperfections to stop you from pressing. Keep pressing. Keep pressing forward. Keep believing God for more. Keep trusting him for the higher call. Keep trusting him for unprecedented favor. Yes, you fell yesterday, but don't allow that to deter you. Number three, reach out for the purpose of God for your life. Reach out for the purpose of God for your life. Let me tell you something. Every time you are asking God for unprecedented favor, ask him for unprecedented favor in line with your purpose in life. Because listen, any favor that comes to you outside of God's purpose for your life will destroy you. Are you following what I'm saying? It will destroy you. So reach out for the purpose of God for your life. Paul said, I do not, I do not, I mean, pretend as if I have attained, but I press on. I press on. Keep pressing on for favor. Keep pressing on for unprecedented favor. I keep pressing on on a daily basis. Believing God for millions of souls. Believing God for the salvation of the world. Believing God for Asia. Believing God for Europe. Believing God for Africa. Believing God for the salvation of America. What am I doing? I am pressing on. I am pressing on. Believing God for more testimonies for the members of this commission. Believing God for more testimonies for the pastors of this commission. Believing God for more testimonies for the leaders in this commission. Believing God for more for everyone. What am I doing? I'm pressing on. Number four, identify the purpose of God for your life. Number four, identify the purpose of God for your life. And when you identify it, guess what? Stay in it. Stay in it. Stay in it. Glory be to God. How do I find and keep unprecedented favor? We're getting deeper now. How do I find and keep unprecedented favor? Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1. From verse 1 to 15. Get ready. If you have just joined us, we'll be partaking communion at the end of tonight's session. Get ready. Prepare the communion elements. Because at the end of today's service, you will be taking communion tonight. Tomorrow evening, we'll be taking communion. And then on Friday, we'll be taking communion. And then there'll be an anointing service. Don't miss any of the sessions. Because God is going to change your life drastically. Why? Because unprecedented times require unprecedented favor. We are living in unprecedented times. I prophesy over some of you that before the end of this month of September, God will put in your hands wealth. Amen. God will open treasures into you Amen. in the name of Jesus. I prophesy it over your life. I prophesy it over your life. Wealth without struggle. Wealth without stress. Amen. God will favor you in an unusual places. Amen. Men and women will favor you in an unusual places. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory. 
So let's go and see how to find and keep unprecedented favor. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 1. The Bible says that, Then the Lord appeared to Abram, to him by the, by the tree of Tembre, trees of Mamre. And he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. You see, there were so many people, yet God only appeared to Abraham. That is favor. When favor locates you, it doesn't matter where you are. God will come knocking on your door. I prophesy over somebody today that favor will find you. The favor of God will find you. The favor of God will locate you in the name of Jesus. Then the Lord appeared to him by the ten trees of Mamre as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked. And behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground. Listen. God only honors, God only reveals his favor or crowns his favor to those who understand honor. If you don't honor, God cannot visit you. God knew that Abraham was a man who understands honor. And so because of that, the Bible says that God visited him. And let me say this, whenever you have a king visit you or a queen visit you, we live in this part of the United Kingdom so we understand this better. When the queen comes to visit, she doesn't come alone. When the queen comes to visit you, that is the whole bank of England that has come to your house. <laughs> the 50 pound notes that you are chasing, the queen's head is on it. The 20 pounds you are chasing, the queen's head is on there. The 10 pounds you are chasing, the queen's head is on it. That means when the queen comes to your house, she comes with everything. Amen. There is no way a king will travel without the booty, without gold, without diamond, without the blessing. So when the king comes to visit, he comes with everything. Amen. God is visiting somebody today. Amen. The glory of God is visiting somebody Amen. today. The favor of God is visiting somebody today. In the name of Jesus. When the queen comes to visit. She comes to visit with everything. So when Abraham honored. God, the Bible says that he bowed himself to the ground. And verse 3, the Bible says that, and he said, my Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, if I have now found what favor in your sight. Oh, I love that. If I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Yes, you can't have favor yes. and God passes by you. Yes. Oh my God. Favor is knocking on your door Amen. today. Favor is knocking on your house today. Favor is knocking on your family's door today. When the favor of God comes, God do exploits in your life. And I love Abraham's response. The Bible says that, and Abraham said, please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may, I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. When favor comes to visit you, you have to learn how to treat favor. Unfortunately, many people don't know how to attract and keep favor. 
They don't know how to attract and keep favor. I want you to follow me this week because this week God is going to do some things in your life that you have never seen before. So Abraham knew how to attract favor and he knew how to keep favor. The Bible says that so Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said quickly, Sarah, Make ready three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran himself to the head, took a tender and good calf, gave it to the young man, and hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where is Sarah? That question, where is Sarah, means where is that problem? When favor visits you, favor comes to locate the problems that you have been going through. Mm. So they ask, where is Sarah? Where is that barrenness? Where is that bitterness? Where is that frustration? Where is that joblessness? Where is Sarah? Where is that situation you are struggling with? Oh, I love this. The Bible says that, and God asked Abraham, where is Sarah your wife? I don't know what you have been suffering. I don't know the struggles you've been going through. But today, God is asking, where is that problem? Where is that situation? Where is that challenge? Where is that thing that is putting you down? Where is that sickness? Where is Sarah, your wife? And I love Abraham's response. The Bible says, and Abraham said, here, she's in the tent. And he said, and God said to Abraham, I will certainly return. Somebody say certainly. God said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. Somebody say certainly. As the Lord liveth, you will not miss the favor of God. I said, as the Lord liveth, you will not miss the favor of God. As the Lord liveth, you will not miss the favor of God. As the Lord liveth, you will not miss the favor of God. You will not die before you encounter favor. You will encounter the favor of God in the time of life in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Oh, glory. Glory. Mm -hmm. Sarah is about to break the barrenness of unfruitfulness. Sarah is about to break the curse of unfruitfulness. Sarah is about to break the curse of barrenness. Sarah is about to break the limitations because when favor comes, limitations can't stand. When favor comes, depression can't stay. When the favor of God comes upon you, nothing can hold you down. I prophesy over you today that you'll break through. You'll break through on every side. You'll break through on the left. You'll break through on the right. You'll break through behind you. You'll break through in front of you. In the name of Jesus. God says, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Sarah, your wife, will have a son. That means when you enter into the dispensation of unprecedented favor, you begin to have what you have never had. 
you begin to gain access to what you have never had access to. I prophesy over you today that you will have a son. Somebody is watching, you are believing God for the fruit of the womb. I prophesy over you that next year about this time, according to the time of life, you will have a one-year-old baby boy. You will have a one-year-old baby girl. You will have a one-year-old twins in your house. You will have a one-year-old triplets in your house. You will have a one-year-old quadruplets in your house. Next year, by this time, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that and Sarah was listening in the tent which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old. Look at their situation. And well advanced in age. And Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. That's what I love about favor. You see when the favor of God shows up. The favor of God is a specialist in what everyone has given up on. The favor of God is a specialist in everything people have given up on. Some of you, people have given up on you. Some of you are in a village right now watching me. And you people have given up on you. But I prophesy over you. In the name of Jesus. The favor of God is about to lift you out of that situation. In Jesus name. She had passed the age of childbearing. But the favor of God picked up that situation and said, I'm going to change this situation to the glory of God. The Bible says that therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, after I am grown old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. And the Lord said to Abram, why did Sarah laugh saying, shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is there anything too hard for God? God is asking, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You see, when you enter into favor, nothing becomes hard. When you enter into favor, Everything becomes easy. The impossible becomes possible. Like Joseph, you went to bed a prisoner. The following day, you wake up as a prime minister. That's what the favor of God can do. God said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return to you according to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son. I love that. What did God say? Psalm 103 verse 20 God says I will arise. Psalm 107. It says I will arise. I will arise upon Zion and show him favor for the set time to favor her has come. This is your set time to be favored. I say this is your set time to be favored. Solution I decree upon you today. It is now your set time to be favored. It is now your set time to be favored. In the name of Jesus. But the Bible says in verse 15. Sarah denied it saying I did not laugh. For she was afraid. And he he said. No, but you did laugh. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. As we get ready to close. Why do we have to engage unprecedented, the unprecedented favor of God? Why do we have to engage the unprecedented favor of God? Six things. Number one, because it accelerates your speed in life. 
the unprecedented favor of God accelerates your speed in life. When the favor of God is upon you, it gives you speed. You begin to catch up on people who have gone ahead of you. And not only that, you catch up and overtake them. Like Elisha, Elijah, you overtake the chariots of Ahab. When the hand of God comes upon you, when the favor of God comes upon you, you begin to operate in speed. Acceleration of speed. Acceleration of speed. Acceleration of speed. So shall it be in your life. Number two. Reason why we have to engage the favor of God is it positions you above others. Amen. It positions you above others. Amen. Esther was a slave girl. Slave girl. But when the unprecedented favor came upon her, it positioned her above even the queen, Vashti. When unprecedented favor came upon Joseph, he was positioned above Potiphar. Potiphar was the general. He went to serve in Potiphar's house. But the moment the favor of God came upon him, God used that favor to position Joseph above Potiphar. May the favor of God position you above others from today. Number three, why do I have to engage the unprecedented favor of God? Number three, because it breaks every cycle of stagnation. It breaks every cycle of stagnation. You cannot be operating in the unprecedented favor of God and be stagnated. It is not possible. So therefore, I decree any form of stagnation in any area of your life. In any area of your life, it is broken today. Be it your finances, it is broken today. Any form of stagnation in your relationship, it is broken today. Any form of stagnation in the life of your children, it is broken today. Any stagnation in your marriage, it is broken today. Any stagnation in your business, it is broken today. I said it is broken today. I said it is broken today. In the name of Jesus, no devil can hold you down. No devil can hold you down. No devil can hold you down. Every cycle of stagnation is broken. Every cycle of stagnation is broken. In the name of Jesus. Number four. Why do I have to engage the unprecedented favor of God? Number four. Because it moves us from glory to glory. It moves you from glory to glory. May that be your testimony after this prophetic encounter. May God move you from glory to glory. May your ministry go from glory to glory. May your marriage go from glory to glory. May your business go from glory to glory. May everything around you move from glory to glory. Proverbs 4.18 The the Bible says the path of the just shine it how brighter and brighter onto the perfect day that means we move from what glory to glory from glory to glory your marriage from henceforth will enjoy from glory to glory your business from henceforth will enjoy from glory to glory your finances from henceforth will enjoy from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Number five, why do I have to engage the unprecedented favor of God? Number five, because it gives you what you don't deserve in life. Oh, I love that. It gives you what you don't deserve in life. David was a shepherd boy. 
when the favor of God located him, God moved him from a shepherd boy to king of Israel. Amen. When the favor of God is upon you, he gives you what you don't deserve. Some of you in this month, God will give you what you don't deserve. God will give you houses you did not deserve. God will give you wealth you did not deserve. God will do things in your life this month that you yourself will be crying. As a matter of fact, by tomorrow, tomorrow about this time, many of you are coming back with testimonies. You are coming back with testimonies in the name of Jesus. Last but not the least, why do I have to engage the unprecedented favor of God? Because it gives you access into the throne room of God. Amen. It gives you access into the throne room of God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I said glory be to God. Amen. I said glory be to God. Amen. Now before we close, before we close, wherever you are, before you can encounter and experience the unprecedented favor of God, you have to give your life to Christ. If you are watching, whichever platform you are watching from, and you haven't given your life to Christ, I want to lead you to Christ. It starts with salvation. You have to give your life to Christ. Amen. You have to give your life to Christ. So I'd like to pray with you. You are not here by accident. You are here because God ordained that you get here. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, I repent of my sins and I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you just said that prayer, you're born again. You're now a child of God. I want you to connect with us connect with us. Go to our website solutionchapel.org Go to the website. There's a section to click on. You can't miss it for salvation. I want you to send me a testimony that you gave your life to Christ today. And as you do that, I will be praying with you every day and I'll send you some nice precious gift to help you become all that God has ordained for you to become. Amen. So go to that website now. Click the link. Write to me. And I'm going to put you on my prayer list. So I can pray for you. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Well we want to partake of the communion. We want to partake of the communion. Everybody partake of the communion. in your house you have bread in your house take bread take juice and as we bless it it will become the body of Christ the Bible says on that, on that night Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks he said this is my body broken for you as often as you do it do it in, in remembrance of me the body of Christ take and eat. As you partake of this body today, every sickness, 
is being dominated. Every sickness is being removed. Any symptoms of COVID-19 is being destroyed. Any symptoms of HIV AIDS is being destroyed. Any symptoms of cancer is destroyed. Any symptoms of aches and pains, they are destroyed now. Any, any symptoms of death is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. The body of Christ, take and eat. same manner he took the cup and he's saying this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you do drink do it in remembrance of me the blood speaks better things as you partake of the blood of Jesus you will be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. You are exempted from every demonic seal, every demonic attack. Any mark of death upon you and over your family, it is removed now. I cover you and your household with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, take and drink. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your healing balm. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for what you've done today. Thank you for your word that has come with power. Thank you for the souls, the thousands that have given their lives to Christ. Thank you for the millions that have been reached. With the gospel, we give you praise. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, we've come to the end of tonight's session. I want to encourage you. Join us tomorrow. Half six. We start from the UK. UK time half six. Till half eight. And you will be blessed. Tomorrow is day two of the prophetic encounter and our theme is unprecedented favor don't miss it tomorrow for anything gather your family gather your friends and let them join us and together we will be blessed in jesus name amen, amen. and amen let's share the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that Christ in you is the hope of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. May he cause you to be the head and not the tail. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nations. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow at half six.